the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Let us call to mind our shortcomings and failures, ask God's pardon and forgiveness for the worthy celebration of this most holy Eucharist. Lord Jesus, you came to call us sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again, glory to judge the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life uh, everlasting. Let us pray. O oh God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law, of our love of you and our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and uh, ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial song.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet, that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ, the word of the Lord. the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you too go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out, going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more. But each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last ones worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and the heat? He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I'm not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if, if I wish to give 
this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Stephen Fry is a British actor and comedian. He's also an outspoken atheist. You know, once he was asked, you know, when you die, suppose you confront God, what would you ask God? He said, I would ask God, why did he create this unjust, painful, chaotic world? You know, the literature today speaks about how God looks at things and how as human beings we look at things. You know, as human beings, with our limited intellectual capabilities, we define certain, ter uh, certain terms, you know, like justice. You know, when we say justice means give everyone their due and punish those who do wrong. So that's our human understanding. But today's first reading, taken from the book of Prophet Isaiah, the prophet says, God looks at reality and the world completely different. There's a big difference between as human beings, we see the world and how God see the world. You know, for God, justice means it goes together with being generous. You know, when we say a person is just means that person look at things more objective manner. But the scripture says, God is just and generous. Now what is God justice? Book of Job chapter 31. Book of Job chapter 31. Job says, God created all of us in his own image and likeness. And if someone is in need, if I don't feed that person, or someone need warm clothes, if I don't share with him, that God, that goes against God's justice. You know, Jesus gave a parable about the rich man and the Lazarus. You know, what was 
Did the rich man did anything wrong? When we look at it, we can say no. He might have worked hard for it, or he might have inherited it, and then he lived a good life. There's nothing wrong with that. But what is God's justice? He was indifferent towards his neighbor who was in need. And the gospel passage of today, we have a beautiful parable. Now Jesus has taken this parable from the real life situation of the people. It was very common in ancient Palestine. The unskilled laborers, you know, they will come to, we can say, now city, let's say the downtown area, and people will come and call them. If someone doesn't been called, if someone doesn't have work one day, that means he may not have nothing much uh, to eat that day. You know, because those days, unskilled laborers, they didn't have anything to fall back. They didn't have any savings. They always worked daily and earned their daily bread. That's why in the parable, the landlord being generous gives the man who worked one hour a full day's wage. Now when the other laborers looked at it, it was not, it was not just. Because the other guys worked all day and the man who worked one hour, they were paid equally. But the way God justice work was completely uh, is completely different. And the literature today invites each one of us to be just and generous like God. And how can we just and generous like God? First, realizing. <clears throat> The blessing in our life. No, I'm not comparing with my neighbor. But just look into your own lives. Whatever may be the situation that you go through, God has blessed you with a lot of good things. And then secondly, since God has blessed us with a lot of good things, we have a responsibility towards our neighbor. Especially those who are less fortunate than us. That's what our God is. He is just and generous. Not just being just alone, but God is just and generous. And that is the invitation of the liturgy, liturgy of today. Share our time, talent, and resource with our brothers and sisters. And always the scripture says, the more that we give, the more that we receive. As we continue this Eucharistic celebration, let's ask the grace from Jesus that we may be grateful and thankful for all the blessings that we have received from him. And ask his grace that he may grant us a generous heart 
that we may share some of those with others, especially those who are less fortunate than us. Please rise. <clears throat> We shall pray together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in one Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess when baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. God's ways are not our ways. God's love and generosity are beyond our understanding. Let us now turn to our loving Father with our prayers. For all those who follow the Christian way, that they may learn to rejoice in God's boundless generosity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, uh, hear our prayer. For catechists and teachers of our parish who share their faith with the young minds, our generous God bless them abundantly, we pray to the Lord. Lord, uh, hear our prayer. For those who cannot find work, that their needs may not be forgotten, we pray to the Lord. Lord, uh, hear our prayer. For all the sick, particularly those coming to the end of their earthly life, that they may experience comfort on the journey to their Father's house, we pray to the Lord. Lord, uh, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we may see the face of Christ in our neighbors and respond generously to those in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, uh, hear our prayer. For all people suffering due to various natural and man-made calamities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, oh, hear our prayer. For those who've gone before us in faith, especially Clifford and Amy Marsalek, that the Lord's generosity may assure them of a place in the kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, oh, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, your love for us surpasses all our hopes and desires. Forgive our failings. Keep us in your peace and lead us in the way of salvation. We ask this through Christ uh, our Lord.
Praise sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, uh, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Receive with the favor of Allah, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries through Christ uh, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world, that in your mercy you send us, send us the Redeemer, that to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning, by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fond of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. (laughs) 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, William our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in a mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Or lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and uh, ever. The peace and joy of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body 
and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us safe for eternal life. for spiritual, spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already in my heart and unite myself to you completely. Please do not let me ever be separated from you. Amen.
Gloire Esprit. Graciously raise up, O oh Lord, those who renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ uh, our Lord. We shall pray together, prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thank you everyone for being part of this Eucharistic celebration. Also would like to thank those who join us through the live stream and later through YouTube. You have a wonderful weekend.